They're coming through, Simon. Yeah, wait. Can we do a lag? Or actually, all right, ready? Hi, my name is Simon Sokla. And I'm Nano from the Bangor High School STEM program, and our project is developing deep learning networks for dynamic traffic light control. So our research question is, how can deep learning networks be used to reduce wait times at an intersection in an open source and cost-efficient manner? So the problem we're trying to address here is the major problem of traffic. Uh, vehicles are primary polluters of not only carbon dioxide, but oxides of nitrogen, which cause acid rain. In 2015, there are approximately 1.3 billion vehicles on the road, and that's expected to almost double in the coming decades. So aside from the congestion and the pollution, even if we do move to an economy with electric vehicles, a green traffic jam is still a traffic jam. So here are some points that we theorize uh, cause traffic from the literature and stuff that we um, thought of. Number one is an excess number of vehicles that are only carrying one or two people. So people not carpooling. Uh, number two and three go together, human driving error and spontaneous generation of traffic, which basically means that traffic can just sort of appear um, from a localized source and spread out uh, just based on the nature of traffic flow and mathematics. Um, and for the other two points after that, the lack of public transportation road infrastructure are things that are uh, pretty hard to change. But what we're trying to address here is something that we can change, which is how the traffic signals themselves are controlled. So here's the problem with the majority of intersections today. So the light timings are usually biased based on the historical data gathered at each lane in the intersection. But this comes with the inherent problem that you can't make smart decisions considering the current state of the intersection. But some of the conventional algorithms work around this using detection methods, such as induction loops, microwave sensors, and cameras uh, to detect cars. But these algorithms are usually primitive, uh, and they use first come, first serve, uh, the first come, first serve algorithm. And well, there are neural network traffic controllers currently on the market, but they're too expensive to be mainstream. So if for the goals of this study, we want to simulate a real intersection accurately. We want to develop uh, deep learning networks using neuroevolution that can optimize the intersection uh, to maximize traffic flow and minimize the wait times. We want to create this on a microcontroller such as the Raspberry Pi so that it can all be easily implemented and we want to have it all free and open source for ease of use and modification. So what is deep learning and neuroevolution? Deep learning is uh, the, a method to train computers to, un to understand complex uh, situations such as the intersection and it goes using a network of computations and weights and biases that takes an input layer as a vector and returns an output layer as a vector and has hidden layers that, that provide the complexity. And so neuroevolution is the development and the selection of these neural networks uh, in, to optimize certain variable and, and it uses a process similar to Darwinian evolution where it's the survival of the fittest and there are random mutations that cause desirable traits to uh, come out in the population. So this is a selection of terminology uh, that we're going to be using for the rest of this presentation. The first thing is a phase, and a phase is a sequence of lights that are on at the same time. And these are a mixture of conflicting and non-conflicting phases, phases where cars can go through freely and phases where cars might have to do a left turn yield, for instance. A stage is a series of phases and for how long each phase is going to run. A traffic controller is a, a, any type of machinery that is used to control the lights themselves. So in the past, this was mechanical, but now is increasingly more computerized. So we're trying to create a neural network traffic controller, essentially. And the term normalized uh, is a mathematical term. And basically, that just means to take a large range of data and to put it between 0 and 1. So for the materials, we used a Raspberry Pi 4. Python 3, Pi 5, and Neural Network Library, all in Python and created by Simon, and uh, some basic electronic hardware uh, for a proof of concept that we will show in the future work. So in order to create an accurate simulation, we wanted to model it off of a real intersection. Uh, so this intersection is in Bangor, and in the middle, you can see the phasing diagram uh, at the same orientation as the uh, overhead view uh, Google Maps on the right. So the phasing diagram shows all directions where cars can move in their respective inbound lanes to uh, what outbound lanes they can go to. Uh, we altered that slightly for the simulation and Simon will talk about that in the next slide. So in creating the simulation in the, in the code, uh, as you can see in the, on the right side, 
of this slide, the diagram for the intersection as implemented in the code is seen in the top right. Um, and where inbound lanes are labeled one through seven, outbound lanes are labeled one through four. And the places that cars can be in the inter like physically inside the intersection in the simulation are labeled one through 12. And so as you can see on the bottom right, uh, phases one through four correspond with those lights and phases one through four are non-yielding while phase five is yielding because of the left turn. And so as you can see, a car coming from lane one and going to outbound lane two follows this path in the simulation. And so we created the, a visual representation of the simulation, which some of you may have seen. And here you can see that the rectangles represent cars and the colors correspond with what lane that they spawned in. And so each simulation was run for 200 time frames, where each time frame is roughly equivalent to one second. And yes, and that's uh, the same car moving from lane one to up on lane two. And so uh, here's how we applied deep learning networks and neuroevolution in the simulation. Each neural network had an uh, architecture of 17 uh, inputs fully connected to a hidden layer of 32 nodes, fully connected to another hidden layer of 16 nodes, and fully connected to a five node output. And so seven of the inputs of the 17 inputs came from the car count at each lane, the normalized. One input for how long the intersection has been on the current phase, one input for if the signal is in a red or yellow phase, and one input for the current phase, and seven inputs for the squared then added wait times in each lane, the normalized. And so the five outputs correspond directly uh, with the five phases that the intersection can be on, and 500 networks respond per generation. So in order to have an accurate simulation, what we had to do is we had to find the relative percent of vehicles that would enter each of the inbound lanes and where they would go to. Um, so we went out and we counted cars for a five minute time period on two occasions here. Uh, and using those uh, probabilities, uh, what we did was we found the probability that if a car were to enter any specific lane, what lane it would go into. So for instance, lane five is the only lane which has three options. If it were, if it were to turn right into outbound lane two, um, you can see it has a 31.5% chance of doing so. It could go straight into outbound lane three, it would have a 24.5% chance of doing so, or it could turn left into lane four. And so each one of these probabilities corresponds to uh, where they can possibly go and what percent chance they have of doing that. Uh, and as you can see, for right turn lanes such as um, two, three, and seven, they have a 100% chance of turning right. So in, in addition, what we have to know is how many cars actually enter the intersection at any one time. So what we did was we took the total amount of cars in each of our data sets and divided that by the time frame to find the cars per second. In addition, we combined that with the average annual daily traffic flow, which is historical data from the um, Bangor Department of Transpor uh, Transportation. Uh, they took that over a 24 hour time frame, as opposed to our five minute time frame. Um, and they found a number of 0.39 and we found a number between uh, 0.1 and 0.5 ish. So what we did is we took the upper bound of 0.5, number one, because it was easier to implement into the simulation, and number two, it sort of replicates the most congested that the intersection would ever be. So um, in order to see if the model that we developed uh, works better than the traditional algorithms, what we had to do is we actually had to make the traditional algorithms in simulation and find out what their best case scenario was in order to compare the best case scenario for the traditional algorithms against our model. So what this diagram shows is the fixed phasing and the first come first serve algorithms. The fixed phasing simply uh, is just a stage that runs through a series of phases. And the first come first serve as stated before is when the first car in the intersection at any of the lanes is chosen to uh, let go. So it's the phase that would let that car go through the intersection is chosen when it shows up and any subsequent cars are added to a queue. So the phase switch timing in the x-axis, what this means is how long the phase is on until it switches to the next phase. And as you can see, for a low phase switch timing between zero and five seconds, the total wait time of the intersection or the sum of all the vehicle's wait times over the 200 second time frame is very high because not a lot of vehicles get to move through the intersection during that time. And there's a minimum between five and 10. And after that, the phase is, uh, mostly on for too long, so uh, it gets worse. Much the same story is painted with the car throughput or how many cars move through the intersection. 
as you can see, between five and 10, uh, that peaks again for these two traditional algorithms. And then um, the car throughput uh, gets worse. And so here we analyze uh, our neural evolution of our neural network traffic light controllers. And so as you can see on the x-axis in this graph is the generations. And so we evolved 500 neural networks per generation for 100 generation. And only generations one through 50 are shown in the graph because past, past generation 50, uh, you get into the land of diminishing returns, but you do still uh, minimize the wait time. So this is a graph of the average and best total wait time per generation. And as you can see, it goes down over time, which is what we want. It optimizes, and so we want less wait time. We want less wait time, which is what it does. And this took um, 2.138 hours to evolve on an Intel Core i2 Duo process. And so here is the car throughput, the average and best car throughput per generation. And this paints the same picture as a previous as a previous graph. Um, as the car throughput rises, we want more cars going through the intersection, and so we optimize the intersection over time with neural evolution. So we compared the best neural network that we got after evolving it through the 100 generations um, to the best case scenario for both the fixed phasing and the first come first serve, so their best respective phase switching time. And what we found is that the neural network performs better in the total wait time. It has about a 12% reduction over the next best, which is the fixed phasing. Um, and that is significant using a t-test at the 95% confidence interval. In addition, the car throughput is improved about 2%, so less, but is still significant over the next best, which is the first come first serve uh, in this domain, which um, was about 80, and the neural network was close to 82 cars in the 200 second time frame. So for our conclusions, first we conclude that we evolved neural networks to control traffic lights at an intersection, and we optimized them using a genetic algorithm. We found that we could reduce wait times by approximately 12% and car throughput by 2% on average over the traditional algorithms. And that constitutes not only a 12% decrease in how long you're actually going to be at the intersection, but also a 12% decrease in the amount of emissions that you're going to get while waiting at that intersection. In addition, we found that the first come first serve algorithm, which is currently implemented um, at most of the detected traffic lights in Bangor and this traffic light as well, does not necessarily perform better than uh, just a simple fixed phasing, except maybe in specific situations. And also, finally, we conclude that we made this as an open source architecture. Uh, the simulation neural network and genetic algorithm are all open source and they can be run on a Raspberry Pi and are available uh, in this free and open source spirit for ease of implementation. And so for our future work, uh, we want to test different parameters, such as the mutation rates, population sizes, and simulation times. And we also want to make a graphical interface in order to make creation of different types of intersections easier. Um, what we have to do in order to make the simulation that we made on a computer viable uh, to work in the real world is to integrate with actual detection systems. Um, and this can be newer detection systems, such as computer vision or uh, older ones such as the induction loops, the microwave sensors, ultrasonic, single region. Um, but definitely alterations would have to be made if you had to use those older systems. In addition, we didn't take into account uh, the effect of pedestrians. Pedestrians obviously play a big part as they can interrupt the whole entire flow of the intersection at any one time. So um, that's definitely a big application that we have to look at. And the last point is that we need to add support for multiple types of intersections. Um, as just studying one doesn't necessarily uh, give you an idea of if this neural network will work for a lot. And also linking multiple intersections together that might be in a row to uh, maximize efficiency across a whole city grid. So the image to the right shows uh, just a simple proof of concept we made using LEDs to show that uh, while the simulation is running, the current the phases for the traffic light can be shown uh, dynamically. Um, if this were to be used, if the Raspberry Pi were to be used to control an actual traffic light, an external power source would probably have to be used as traffic lights run on a much higher voltage and um, power than the uh, Raspberry Pi can output, obviously. So uh, using the simple proof of concept just shows that it can control that, but not necessarily uh, how that, would har that hardware would be made. But that is something that we were working on. And so to review the goals of our study, uh, we did... Uh, simulate a real intersection accurately and realistically. We also did uh, optimize deep learning neural network agents 
that could maximize traffic flow and minimize wait times when compared to the conventional algorithms. And we also created this on Raspberry Pi so it can be easily implemented. And all of the models and code are free and open source for ease of future development and cost-effective implementation. Uh, so for our acknowledgments, we would like to thank Dr. Barbara Stewart, who is the Bangor High School STEM director, Mr. Theodore Taylor, Mr. John Cangelosi from the Bangor High School STEM program, all the traffic engineers at the Bangor Public Works who helped us uh, understand the current state of their infrastructure, and Mr. Kerry James, who was the former STEM director. We would like to entertain any questions at this point. <laughs>